All right, y'all, welcome back to my arms channel. Okay, so today we're doing another shooting fundamentals video. Now, previously we've done pistol fundamentals, so that was all about combat pistol shooting, and then we moved more into sort of malfunction, stoppages, reloads. Now, I plan to do the same for the rifle. Now, today we're gonna to be starting off with combat rifle fundamentals. Now, it's definitely going to be different from, you know, no, kind of like marksmanship fundamentals, where, you know, kind of like when I was in the Marine Corps and we we're doing like the rifle range, and you're doing like the 200 meter or the 200 yard standing and you're doing like stuff like this or you're wrapping your arm up doing all this crazy stuff i mean it works for marksmanship shooting competitive shooting like that but i'm going to be more focused on combat shooting for this video series for these fundamentals fundamentals you know they'll generally remain the same but they'll certainly look different like your stance for that type of shooting it's going to be very different from sort of combat shooting as well so we're going to be going over the fundamentals and then i'll give some some tips and tricks now of course if you guys are new to the channel sort of my background i guess when it comes to shooting specifically with combat shooting so i spent five years in the marine corps infantry um, when i was also in the marine corps i was part of the cqb team the recapture tactics team so we did a lot of sort of combat shooting very quick paced stuff short distances and that's kind of like where i th thrive i guess it's kind of what i enjoy the most for sure um, it's just a lot more exciting to me than some of that long range marksmanship stuff, which is a little bit slower um, and a little bit more monotonous, I think. But yeah, t teach his own. So that's kind of my background coming into the army. I switched to the army and I was in the army infantry for a few years and now I'm still serving active duty in the army. But even though I'm not infantry anymore, I do love to teach this still because it instills a foundational understanding of rifle combat shooting. Now, I know you guys will probably have a lot of different experiences, potentially a lot more experience than I do. And you know, I'm not going to ignore that. So if you guys have anything to add, definitely throw it down below in the comment section so we can kind of analyze that and maybe, yeah, take different things from everybody's toolbox and kind of put it in our own. But yeah, so today we're going to be doing our demo with this blue gun here. Uh, it's just got a vortex optic just so it's kind of easier for me to actually aim at stuff, um, just so it's a little bit more believable. But um, yeah, it's of course the fundamentals will remain the same for pretty much any sort of rifle. Um, I will mention certain things that won't really apply as much to other rifle configurations, maybe like AKs or even like bullpup rifles. Uh, but for the mo most part, an AR-15 is a pretty good thing to, to demonstrate on. So like I did with the pistol fundamentals video, I'm gonna go over each fundamental, kind of go over um, what I've learned works and what doesn't work and what I've done to sort of refine that specific fundamental myself. Um, because yeah, it will take some time just knowing how to employ that fundamental. Um, it still requires a lot of range time to kind of perfect it a little bit. Now for the most part, shooting rifles is much easier than shooting pistols. It's a lot easier to maintain the recoil. It's a lot easier to stabilize it because obviously you have like a stock and whatnot. You have two different points of contact, so it makes it a little bit easier to stabilize as well. Aiming in general is just easier, especially since you have a lot more sort of sight options as well. Um, but yeah, the fundamentals will look a little bit similar as far as what we're actually going over. So the first thing is going to be your stance. So again, we're talking about combat shooting, not necessarily marksmanship style shooting. So with combat shooting, again, it also depends on if you're going to be wearing body armor or not. Um, but for the most part, these will still generally remain the same. But you really want to get yourself into an aggressive stance. Now, I've seen a bunch of different aggressive stances with different militaries, um, specifically with like the Israeli Defense Forces. They like really sort of like leaned into it almost like this. Um, and we're not necessarily going to go like that far, um, but we also don't want to be like this where we're kind of just like standing straight up and we're going to get like really off balance. So what you wanna do, of course, get your feet shoulder width apart, pretty standard when it comes to shooting. And I'll get another angle so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. But generally, that the toes of that back foot are going to be about online or maybe a little bit in front of, a little bit in back of that heel of that lead foot. Now you wanna kind of sit in, in this stance. So what I mean by that is we don't wanna like straight up crouch down, but you almost wanna just unlock your knees for sure and kind of sit in that position a bit so you're a little bit springier you can kind of push on either foot a little bit better if you need to if you need to like maneuver your weapon or just in general with that recoil if you're just kind of like locking your knees out you're kind of you're going to be like sort of teetering on your legs and if you're squatting then in general it's also going to be kind of a weird center of gravity so you kind of just want to sit in it a little bit now generally speaking with me 
I tend to straighten my back leg a little bit more, not like a full lockout, kind of like with the Israelis when I was training with them, but almost a lockout. It's kind of just bent slightly. Your front leg, again, you're gonna be kind of like chilling on it. And it's basically going to look like this. So if I need to, I can kind of pivot back and forth sort of with my hips. And again, I can absorb that recoil. Straightening the leg out a little bit more kind of allows me to lean into it a little bit better and kind of absorb that recoil a little bit better as well. So this is kind of what it's going to be looking like. So you can see I'm springy. I can kind of rotate at the hips if I need to. And again, I can absorb that recoil, um, especially like if you're shooting full auto guns for whatever reason, if you get an opportunity to do that. Uh, yeah, it's really nice to kind of use that back leg as a support. And I have a couple of videos on my channel where you kind of see that a little bit as well. And again, sort of another angle here, but almost a lockout with that back leg. And I'm just using that to soak up the recoil. And that's basically your stance. You don't want to like lean forward too much. Um, I know when I was initially shooting rifle in the Marines, you get like a lot of like younger infantrymen who do all this stuff where they're like really leaning into it, really squatting down. And you're just going to get fatigued really, really quickly um, to the point where it's like your back's going to get destroyed, especially when you're, if you're wearing body armor, if you're doing all this stuff, your back is going to get destroyed really fast. And uh, yeah, it's going to suffer. You're going to notice that you're moving a lot, around a lot more. You're getting more tired, more sort of heavy breathing. Um, and you don't want to be doing all this heavy breathing when you're trying to actually use your sights. And it kind of goes without saying, but we don't want to be the people that are like putting their feet next to each other, like really close in. And they're just like shooting like this or whatever, any crazy stuff, leaning back even. You do see that a lot. Again, you wanna be a little bit more aggressive. And I think it just helps a little bit more with the combat mindset to sort of push yourself real quick into an aggressive position because it shows that you're ready. And it kind of, you know, if the other person identifies you just getting into an aggressive stance, which I think is what the Israeli Defense Forces were really training, you really wanna get into that aggressive stance to kind of show them, uh, yeah, you probably mean business. Okay, so next thing we're gonna talk about is our grip. So we have two points of contact. Again, you have your grip and your hand guard, your rail system, whatever. Um, you might have a vertical grip, whatever. The, the principles will still pretty much remain the same. Um, so you're going to be getting a high grip on this. So as high as possible, get that meaty portion of your hand as high in that sort of pocket as possible. You don't want it down here because when you're trying to shoot, one, it's gonna make it harder to pull a trigger. You might be jerking the trigger to the side. And at the same time, when it recoils, it's going to be pivoting a lot more on that hand. And again, whatever the configuration, this will be a standard throughout. And even with a bullpup firearm where the magazine is back here, it's going to be the same. You don't want a low grip. You wanna get it nice and high so you can really absorb that recoil a little bit better. And just, again, easier trigger control as well. Now you don't need to be gripping this, like death gripping it to the point where somebody's trying to rip it out of your hand. If they are, then yeah, definitely grip it harder. But for the most part, yeah, you don't need to be like death squeezing this thing. Um, honestly, I think it's better to have a little bit less grip just so you can focus a little bit more pressure on your trigger finger and kind of focus on that. Again, that's more for pistol shooting. It's not as pertinent with rifle because generally rifle is a little bit easier to stabilize again and the trigger control isn't really going to affect it as much. But again, it kind of just helps all your other fundamentals. Now, as far as holding it, you have a few different options when you're actually talking about holding it with the handguard. Um, for me, the first few years of shooting, I would just kind of keep my thumb on the side and have a grip underneath the handguard. This works totally fine. Um, and again, even with like pointing the weapon, like you can kind of have a loose grip until you're actually aiming, kind of like what I'm, what I'm doing there, I'm kind of snapping my hand. So it allows me to kind of pivot the weapon a little bit better. If I need to move it around cover, I can do that a little bit quicker. And you know, if I'm gripping it like this, sometimes when I'm popping it up, my hand's gonna have to move anyway. So generally keep it loose and then pop it. You can either wrap your thumb on top here, sort of clamp it down, or you can keep your thumb to the side. Generally speaking, um, again, it really depends on the weapon you're actually using, but I'll wrap my thumb around. Just gives me a little bit more control. I feel like I can point slightly better. Um, and at the same time, when it's actually recoiling, I have that thumb on top to keep it a little bit more downward pressure. Um, but yeah, you can. there are certain techniques. If you're doing point shooting, you can keep your thumb to the side of your handguard and almost point with your thumb. And that's something that we employed as well. The only thing I would say to steer away from is if you have a vertical grip, you don't wanna be holding it like this 
because yeah, you can get some back pressure in, but as far as it like recoiling to the side, you can't really control it as much. So even if you have a vertical grip, it's better to just kind of use it as a hand stop. So your hand isn't sliding back. It's kind of getting resistance with that vertical grip. Um, but yeah, using a vertical grip like this, generally speaking, is a little bit harder to aim, kind of like point the weapon. And it's also a little bit harder to control that recoil for the most part. There are a bunch of different sort of hand stops or grip options out there. So you can just find something that looks, um, <laughs> looks cool, sure but something that actually works for you to actually keep control of that weapon, which you can kind of see here with my Desert Tech. I just have an angled grip. I like these um, just because I can kind of use it a little bit as a hand stop and also as a bit of a, just a sort of standard handguard grip. But you can see here, since I have a lot going on with the handguard, I can wrap my thumb around it, but for the most part, especially since I have pressure switches, I am generally gonna keep my thumb pretty straight. And because I have this, this angled grip here, it's not really going anywhere. So I don't really have to worry about that as much. Now, again, as far as the pressure is concerned, you don't really need to be death gripping this. Um, again, with your grips, you can kind of use them to give yourself a little bit more grip, whether it be like stippling or sort of texture, keeps your hand from slipping. And that's pretty much what you're concerned about. You don't want this slipping anywhere, especially when it's recoiling, it might be sort of pushing off of your shoulder and be wanting to sort of slip out of this hand a little bit, which again, sort of the, the clamp helps a little bit more with. Um, but for the most part, again, if you have a good grip, it's not really going to be going anywhere. And in general, sort of help you out with that is just getting a little bit of back pressure, sort of pulling a little bit on that, that front hand to kind of keep the weapon in your shoulder so the weapon also isn't kind of like slipping anywhere as well. Now, a very important thing with the rifle is the stock placement. So you wanna get this in the pocket of your shoulder. So when you're talking about the pocket of your shoulder, basically in between your chest and your shoulder. So kind of where your armpit is, but you don't want it really low in there because again, there's a potential for it to kind of slip out. You want to get it high in the pocket of that shoulder there. One, because it allows you to sort of resist it a little bit better. It allows your shoulder to do a lot of the work and kind of, you know, rolling forward and keeping that stock in place. If you have it too low or too high, again, the shoulder, doesn't have as much ability to kind of keep it in place. So you wanna get it high and in the pocket of that shoulder there. Now, also with the stock, something called stock weld. So when you're actually aiming, depending on your optic and what have you, um, generally you wanna get a good placement with your cheek and the stock. Now you don't wanna bring your head to your stock like this. So if I bring my head to my sights, one, everything is going to be skewed because now I'm looking at it from like a weird angle. Even if I like, do this and I'm like kind of bringing my neck down or something like a turtle. Again, it's not, it's not aggressive. So it's going to end up taking you longer. And at the same time, once you actually start shooting, it's going to be harder to acquire your sights reliably. So it's going to be slightly different every time because as opposed to keeping your head in a normal position, your sort of normal spine alignment and bringing your weapon up to your eye, that's all natural. It's going to be pretty much the same keeping it in the, the pocket of your shoulder is going to be a lot easier as opposed to, you know, either doing this or bringing my head down. It's not going to be as reliable. It's not going to be as consistent. It's going to take you longer to actually get your sights acquired. And again, it's going to just skew your perspective a little bit because now you're looking at everything in a kind of weird angle. So you want to keep your sort of head in a normal position and bring your sights and stock up to your eyes and your stock up to your cheek. Something you can do is you can kind of push the weapon out and then pull it back into your shoulder. So it's like a two-stage thing, out and then in, and it just allows you to punch out so your sight is on the target and then lock it into your shoulder. Honestly, this took me a while to get used to because for the most part when I was training, I would just keep it in the pocket of my shoulder and just bring my weapon up, which works totally fine, honestly. Um, you don't need to be doing all of this excess movement if you're not comfortable with it. Honestly, I'm probably just as fast just bringing the weapon up and keeping it in my shoulder. But yeah, it, it helps if you have like, I guess if you have like bigger shoulders, it keeps it in your shoulder a little bit better, especially when you're kind of just like walking around, you can just present the weapon up like that. Um, but again, if you, if you have body armor, it also might not be feasible, especially if you have plates right here. You know, if you're kind of moving around, it's gonna push your stock out a little bit. So you can't necessarily just pivot because it won't be like on your, your arm basically. So it might be better to push and then pull it into that pocket of your shoulder 
get it nice and settled, especially with that body armor. So with all those fundamentals in mind, again, we're talking about stance, grip, and then cheek weld. We're already pretty well set up for combat shooting. You get a nice aggressive platform, which allows you to actually employ your weapon quickly and effectively, while also you know, absorbing that recoil sort of to the, to the best ability, um, kind of letting your body do most of the work. Now, something that's not as pertinent, but definitely pertinent when it comes to a rifle still, is going to be your trigger control. With a pistol, again, trigger control is really your money maker. Uh, if you mess up your trigger control, your shot's probably gonna go all over the place, especially if you're like anticipating. But with a rifle, if you have all those fundamentals we just talked about, you'll still be pretty well set up to get some pretty accurate shots, but you don't want to do certain things with a trigger like slapping the trigger, which I'll demonstrate here with this AR-15. So you don't want to be slapping the trigger. And basically what that means is your finger is all the way off the trigger basically. And you're just kind of just throwing your finger back. Because if you do that, again, a lot of excess movement, even if you have good fundamentals, there's a lot of excess movement when you actually hit the trigger like that. And with a rifle, just like with a pistol, it's got a trigger reset that you need to exploit. So what you wanna do is still slow steady squeeze. Even if you're doing combat marksmanship shooting, it's not going to be as slow, but it's still going to be a steady squeeze. And you still don't want to just keep taking your finger off of the trigger and keep doing all this because you're gonna get a lot of sloppy trigger pulls. Your weapon's gonna be moving a lot. So what I mean with that trigger control, so again, you wanna do a slow steady squeeze and hold the trigger to the rear. So, okay, the weapon fires, it cycles. You know, if you had ammo, it'll cycle. And then you wanna slowly let off, my arm's getting tired. You wanna slowly let off of the trigger so you hear that reset. And depending on the, the, the firearm, it'll be a little bit easier to hear, a little bit easier to feel. Uh, but again, you do wanna bring that finger only back to that trigger reset because again, if you're doing, if you're holding it to the rear, and then you're still just doing all that, there's still, especially with some triggers, there's still some creep that you need to take out, some slack you need to take out before you actually get to that wall where the trigger will actually release again or the hammer will release again. So again, sort of bring it to the rear, hold it, weapon cycles, only release your finger to that trigger reset and then shoot again. And that allows you to get much quicker shots you can get some really fast shots, especially with certain firearms and also depending on, you know, your finger skill, I guess. I'm not very good at shooting fast, if I'm being honest. Um, but again, if you're not utilizing that trigger reset, you're going to be kind of sloppy in general and you're definitely not going to be able to get any good, quick follow on shots if you're not using that. And again, you don't want to be sort of pushing or pulling the trigger to the left or the right because you're still going to move your sights a little bit, especially when the shot's actually going off. Okay, now as far as breathing, breathing is pretty important when it comes to rifle shooting, just shooting in general. With combat shooting, again, not going to be as pertinent. Again, if all these other fundamentals are solid, your breathing is not going to affect it too much. And it's gonna be pretty hard to control your breathing when you're doing combat shooting because you're gonna be stressed out, you're gonna be physically stressed. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Your adrenaline's gonna be going crazy. So you're gonna be breathing like, like stuff like that. So your weapon is going to be wanting to move when you're breathing. And again, with combat shooting, it's going to be closer range stuff, um, quicker pace stuff. So your shots don't need to be as precise, but again, you are accountable for every round you fire. So you do want to get to the point where you can sort of use a little bit of, of sort of breathing control. Um, but for the most part, your other fundamentals should be able to assist with that. Now, something I will notice I do mostly when I'm not like super stressed out or breathing too heavy is when I actually pull the trigger, I'll hold my breath for a split second. And I know with combat shooting, you don't want to breathe in and then hold your breath because now your, your positioning is different, but I'm not in the pro and I'm not lifting off the, the ground because I'm breathing in. So even if I'm breathing in, I can just hold my breath slightly, pull that trigger and then keep breathing and it just keeps the weapon slightly more stable. Um, and again, mostly more pertinent for maybe a little bit longer distances for combat shooting, maybe like 50 to 100 yards or smaller shots. But yeah, I will notice I do that. Now, even when I'm walking, I think when I'm walking, that's when I really notice, damn, my jersey accent kind of just came out there. Uh, that's when I really kind of notice when I'm holding my breath is when I'm kind of planning my shots. So, okay, my foot just hit the ground, hold my breath, bang. 
breathe in because I'm, when I'm stepping anyway, my positioning is gonna be getting moved around regardless. So if I'm breathing in during that step, then it's fine. So I'll breathe in, bang, hold my breath, breathe in, hold my breath, bang. So it almost gets timed with my actual um, foot placement, but it's also, again, just in general with my trigger squeeze. So. Yeah, breathing, kind of important, more important for marksmanship shooting, not so much combat shooting, but you can still utilize that a little bit to get slightly slightly more accurate, slightly more consistent shots. Um, but sometimes, yeah, you're, just, you're not gonna be focused on that at all. You're gonna be focused on getting air in so you can actually continue to see and get you know, blood to your brain so you can actually analyze everything that's going down. Because yeah, in a CQB environment, you wanna make sure there's not a whole lot of fog or as minimal fog as you can up here so you can focus on kind of, you know, life preservation, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna change the perspective up a little bit just for this. So for sight alignment, sight picture. So depending on what you have, you might have iron sights, kind of like we have here on this MP5. You might have red dot sight, holographic sights, uh, scopes. The principle will pretty much remain the same. Um, I guess it's just how easy it will actually be or some things you need to actually consider. So with iron sights, you will have to consider your sight picture. Now sight picture is pretty simple. It's ensuring your front sight is in the correct position in relation to the rear sight. So you can see here with these sights, we're just going to align the front sight hood and the front sight post in the center of our rear sights here. Now at the same time, whenever you're actually aiming, you want the front sight to be completely clear. So all your focus going on the front sight to make sure your front sight is actually aligned properly with your rear sight. Your target itself is going to be slightly blurry and then your rear sight is going to be very blurry. So kind of how it is here. So the target slightly blurry, front sight's very clear, rear sight's very blurry. So with iron sight, that's basically how it works. Now with a red dot sight, it makes it a little bit easier because now you don't need to be aligning a front sight with a rear sight. As long as you get it zeroed properly, all you need to do is put that dot where you wanna shoot and you'll be good to go. And because it's such a simple concept, a lot of people end up putting a red dot sight on their weapon. Even with pistols, you can see it's definitely growing in popularity just because, again, there's really less room for error as far as ensuring that sight picture. Now you're just focused on sight alignment. What sight alignment means is basically aligning your sights with the target. So if I'm trying to hit this dude, Ivan over here, if I'm trying to hit him center mass, I'm going to put my dots center mass. Of course, it's going to change with ballistics if this dude's really far out. I might have to aim a little bit higher. Again, this is why it's important to ensure your optic is actually zeroed so you can actually put that red dot where you want the bullet to go and then you'll be good to go. So side alignment, just aligning your sights with whatever you're trying to actually hit. And then of course, scopes are always an option. We have a Trigicon ACOG here. Now, when you start doing this, again, the principle still applies with the actual red dot sight. Don't have to worry so much about sight picture. You do wanna make sure you're still focusing on that reticle to make sure it's where you want it to be in relation to the targets. However, now you also have some other things to consider like your eye relief. So you can see here, if I'm way back here, I'm not really seeing too much of the actual scope. So I gotta come in a little bit more and get that proper eye relief there. Make sure there's no scope shadow basically. So that's kind of where eye relief comes into play. Um, and you kind of just need to test it out with whatever rifle you're using, whatever caliber you're using and get a good balance there. But yeah, scopes, again, they're a great option, very easy to use. Um, and you know, they're pretty versatile now if you get some variable optics, you can kind of change the magnification. And that will give you the versatility of hitting targets that are a little bit further out with that magnification and then switching to the lower magnification so you can actually engage close threats if you have to go into a CQB environment. Now that's basically everything you need uh, to actually get started with combat shooting. A few other things, um, something called follow through. So when you actually pull that trigger, again, you're gonna be using that trigger reset, but let's say I just engage someone or something and I wanna keep my weapon ready to engage them again. So I shoot weapon recoils, I wanna get my sights back onto that target where I'm trying to hit, whether it be center mass or what have you. I wanna get my sights back to there as soon as possible. So recoils, get back, recoil, get it back. Okay, and that's called kind of follow through. You wanna keep your sights where you want to potentially engage. Um, so 
that trigger reset will kind of help you a little bit with at least not moving the weapon prematurely. But again, you want to get those sights back onto the targets so you can get some more follow on shots. And I notice, especially when I'm on the range, I forget this a lot. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll shoot three rounds, two rounds, whatever. I'll shoot a certain amount of rounds and then I'll just drop my weapon. Now you can assess your, your damage, do like a battle damage assessment, if you will, while you're actually looking through your sights. So, you know, if you're engaging someone or something, you can see where those rounds are going, how they're affecting the target, and you can still see that through your optic. And again, sometimes it's better to just do that so you can get some more follow-on shots if you need to. So, okay, I'm engaging. Okay, the person is falling. Okay, they're definitely down. Now I can lower my weapon. I'm supposed to, you know, three rounds and I lower my weapon and all of a sudden I just hit body armor and they're like still okay and they're still shooting at me. So you wanna kind of assess that through your sights while you're engaging so you're not just immediately dropping. And again, it is kind of a hard thing for me to train through because um, when you're talking about combat shooting, you don't wanna be in your sights except for when you're actually engaging somebody or maybe, you know, if you see somebody that's popping in and out of cover and they're not like popping out of cover from a different area, you can kind of stay in your sights and wait for them to pop out. Um, but for the most part, you know, if you're not actively engaging someone, you wanna keep that sight below your eyesight so you can kind of still scan because when you're actually engaging, if I'm walking through a, a hallway or something or a room and my eye is in my sight, I'm gonna get very tunnel vision and sort of focus because a lot of times there's going to be multiple threats. So let's say if I'm like this, I see one person coming out here, but in my peripheral, I see someone else popping up here. So I know when I'm done engaging this guy or that guy, I need to move to the other person as opposed to doing this. Okay, I see a guy and then I need to kind of like scan again. And then there's a guy already that's kind of shooting at me. So yeah, you don't want to go into your optic or your sights until you're actually engaging somebody. And then once you do your assessment, okay, they're not a threat anymore. I can lower it and sort of scan. And that kind of brings in holds. Uh, I'm not gonna go too in depth with this, but for the most part, for me, it'll be low ready. So kind of just my optic is right below my eyesight. And again, this makes it very easy for you to sort of pop your weapon up into your eyes to engage, whether it be a threat over here or a threat over here, it makes it very easy to sort of pivot your weapon. But again, this is only going to be when there's like an indicator of a threat or you know that there's a threat in the area and you're about to engage, because if you're just walk around like this all the time. I mean, your biceps might be like massive, um, but you're gonna get very fatigued very quickly. So yeah, this is kind of when you're scanning for threats or you know that there's a potential threat. So you wanna be ready to actually engage. There is the high ready that a lot of people use, a few different variations of the high ready. Um, I don't particularly use it too much, um, but it is an option and it allows you, again, to kind of maneuver your weapon a little bit easier, um, gets you a little bit less fatigued as well. Um, but honestly, I don't know, I haven't used the high ready enough to actually, you know, talk so much about the benefits that I've been able to tell from it. Um, and then of course the ready is when you're actually in your sights and you are engaging. Now you can see when I'm actually getting my weapon up and I'm employing all these, my elbows aren't out like this. You'll see like some old footage where you have people with MP5s or whatever, and they're keeping their elbow up like this. Yeah, if you're shooting full auto, you might be able to like use more of that arm and that shoulder to keep the weapon in place. But yeah, you don't want to be getting your elbows all high up like this because let's say if I'm coming around cover, if I'm doing this, they're gonna see my elbow way before they see my weapon and way before I see them. So I'm gonna do this, my elbow is gonna get blasted out about three times before I can actually even engage them. So you wanna keep those elbows nice and tight to your body. And your weapon's still not gonna be going anywhere if you're actually keeping it high in the pocket of your shoulder. So you wanna be coming around cover. You want your muzzle to be coming around cover the same time as your body is, so your head and your arm. You don't want your arm or your head kind of peeking out before your weapon because then they have the potential to engage you before you can engage them. So keep it nice and tight. And again, you'll be fine if you just keep it in that, that shoulder, okay? Now there are some considerations with the rifle that you might wanna be aware of. I um, mean, you might have to change your fundamentals up a little bit, but we'll, what we just went over will give you a good sort of baseline to be able to take them out to the range and employ some effective shooting um, and build some pretty good muscle memory. Of course, if you have a shorter weapon, especially in like a higher caliber and a recoil is a little bit more or what have you, then you might have to change your stance up. You might have to change some things up slightly. Um, if you have an optic, like an ACOG like this, where you have to get a certain eye relief or else you're not going to be able to actually see through the optic properly, 
then that might also affect kind of how you're getting your, your cheek weld or your stock weld or how you're actually bringing your weapon up because it might not be as feasible to push and then pull and get like a consistent eye relief. You might just want to kind of pivot up and get consistent eye relief like that. There's a lot of things to consider. Slings in general will kind of affect how you hold it, um, especially your sling setup. This right here is not a very good sling setup. Um, it's kind of just something I threw on here. Um, but yeah, there are some pieces of equipment will, that will kind of work against you in some regard, and you kind of just have to find a good balance. Again, you don't want to have too much on here to where you can't like get a good grip of the weapon itself, or if you do like to do the sort of clamp, um, you want to kind of leave some space so you can do that. Or if you're like me and you have like massive hands, then it's not really an issue. You can kind of just, yeah, you'll manage. But yeah, that is basically the fundamentals video. Let me know what you guys think. Of course, I want to go a little bit more advanced as far as like different drills you can do to be a little bit more proficient, kind of how you can use your footwork to maneuver maybe to different targets or even maneuver around cover, kind of using your hips, hips a little bit so you can kind of keeping yourself a little bit safer um, and still, you know, shooting effectively. So a lot of things I'd like to go over still, but I think next, again, kind of like how we do with the pistol, malfunctions, stoppages, reloads will be another good thing to cover next. Um, now look a little bit different depending on, you know, a bullpup or an AR. So yeah, a few things. And of course you can see the, uh, the difference. This is a 20 inch barrel. This is a 16 inch barrel, but yeah, pretty significant length differences there. So that'll be kind of fun to talk through all of that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have anything to add, of course, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, but yeah, this is a lot of fun. I really love teaching this kind of stuff, um, whether it be through YouTube or in person when I'm kind of teaching soldiers. Yeah, I'm just very passionate about it and I'm always willing to learn more. So that's why I like the feedback you guys give me. There's some things that I haven't heard before or I've heard it and I've kind of dismissed it because I didn't really get a good explanation or some good experience kind of feedback. But yeah, there's a lot of really solid examples of kind of what might work a little bit better in certain circumstances. So I do appreciate that. But let me know what you guys think regardless. If you guys liked the video, of course hit that thumbs up and definitely consider subscribing. I like to do more of these sort of educational instructional videos when I can, but of course I'll rely on some of what y'all request as well. If you wanna see certain drills or what have you, I'll try and facilitate that. But this stuff in general is just fun for me to record. But hopefully it was fun for you guys to watch. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, that was it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.